Hey guys, Gagarth1970 again. This time we do a review of the 100 scale heavy gun from the F91 movie and also kind of from the Victory Gundam series. So for colors, he comes molded almost entirely in a very light mint greenish color. And then you have various bits and pieces that are gray. The hands, uh, thrusters, the grenade racks here. And then, oh yeah, of course get polycaps. And then all the rest are stickers. The red here on his chin is a sticker, though you actually only get a sticker that kind of wraps around. And this part here, I kind of cut that out myself. As you can see, there should be something sticking out here. Cut it off here and put it up on front because yeah, it did look kind of weird. I mean, you have wrapped around red and then there's just mint green there. Then, for the cockpit hatch, this here is a sticker. These two triangles are stickers. The red and the white thing, just one sticker that wraps around. And that's about everything you get for stick. Oh yeah, uh, the black wraps around. It's one sticker here, one sticker here, and then one sticker in there. And you don't just get normal stickers, you also get a sheet of water slide decals. And unfortunately enough, they're all in perfect English. They even spell danger right. Um, though I have to say the English text on it seems to be quite big. Uh, so I haven't put them on yet because I can't decide if whether they really look all that great or not. But there are definitely a few good ones like this is definitely nice and but some of them look like they're just a bit too big. Would have been better if they were somewhat smaller. But still, a very nice feature uh, for an old model for this price. Now on to articulation. The head is on a peg, not on a ball joint. It goes up, down, and will turn around all the way. There we go. Then the arms will rotate around, go out nicely like so. Then the elbow is unfortunately only on one joint, so you don't even get 90 degrees. What I do like is, even though it's on a polycap, it does look a little bit mechanical with the line in there. At least they were trying. That, of course, turns around the elbow. Then the hand, unlike the head, is on a ball joint, so it will wiggle around and turn around and do everything a ball joint does. Then these hands are uh, like the wing models, uh, G Gundams. The, the three fingers here are molded together, then you have a separate trigger finger, and they are on a hinge. Of course, um, since I said that they were similar to the wing gunner models, I have no idea how long these will stay solid. And they might turn into a floppy mess eventually. Then the body turns around all the way. And when you extend it, you also get some side to side movement. Not that it's very useful, but it's there. Then the front skirts mold it separately. They don't move out a lot, but the legs still get a decent amount of movement forwards and backwards a little bit like that. Then they go out about that far and they can pop out if you move them too much. Then, um, his legs are just on a single joint and they go up about that far. However, this here is connected uh, with two horizontal pegs on each. So I think if you cut one of the pegs on each side, you might get a functional joint. However, the pegs are very thin, so I'm not going to try it with this model, I'm going to try it with my second one. So I at least have one that's fully functional. Then the feet go forwards, backwards, side to side and will turn out a little bit. His ankle guard is molded together with the feet and this part here is also molded together with the foot. So this entire thing are just two pieces slapped together. Another piece of articulation is kind of linked together with his accessories. The grenade packs open up. So, let's immediately get to the accessories now. Like I said, the grenades here. And they are all molded together, but I think you should be able to separate them and they will still stay in there. And it also looks like he should be able to hold them. 
even though I'm pretty sure these were kind of like um, rocket propelled grenades kind of things because I think they shot out in the anime. Then another accessory you get is his beam rifle, which I think is one of the best looking beam rifles around. It's simple, yet it still looks interesting. I've got a lot of things going on, so I really like the design. Unfortunately, you don't have a moving handle. So you do have to pose him a little bit awkwardly in order to get him to hold it with both hands. Though it can still be done, like so. Also, it's in the, also it's in the hand very solidly and will not fall out. So, well, because this um, rifle is also very light, so that's a good thing for these hands because yeah, like I said, I don't have a lot of good experiences with uh, the Gundam Wing hands or the um, Gundam X hands, so so far it's all good. And also has to be at a little bit of an angle because of the stock here, but it looks really good like that. Then the final accessory you get a solid shield and these whoops and these um, big. Uh, things here should be red. Unfortunately, you do not get a sticker, so you will have to do some painting. So, some nice inner detail pegs into the arm, and in order to get it to turn around, well, it turns around like this, but if you want it like so, you will have to pull it out a little bit because there are it's a bit thicker here. I don't know why they did that, but. It might be a good idea to simply cut these extra bits off. And there you go. That's unfortunately all you get for accessories. That means you do not get a beam saber. And this kit, I believe, should come with two beam sabers. So, a little, quite a disappointment. Not even giving us solid beams. And just a little piece of advice, if you want to give him a beam saber, um, 1 100 scale beam sabers look quite awkward because this is a small model kit. Just pull the shield here. He can kind of hold on to it, but yeah, that just looks way, 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 way too big. What I recommend is using a 1 144 scale real grade beam saber. Because also the beams. Uh, these beams are between the 144 scale beams and between the 1100 scale beams, making this the perfect size for this guy. And one thing I almost forgot about is the beam rifle can actually be stored on the back on the back skirt here. You have a little peg here. Simply open this up, and it slides into there. And once you get it in there. It's relatively secure. If you don't push it around too much, it shouldn't be any problem at all. Though, if you touch it and it's like at an angle, it could fall out. Though it seems to be quite stable. There we go. So yeah, just be a bit careful. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And even though, it has quite crappy articulation, it has very few accessories, it's still, I would still recommend it because it, it's, it's definitely worth the money. It's only 800 yen. And we're talking about a 1 100 scale, albeit a slightly small 1 100 scale, it's still quite a nice big figure. So. Yeah, when you think about it, 800 yen, that is the cheap, even though uh, he lacks a bit in the accessory department, you could always buy a separate weapon pack, uh, like for example from Kotobukiya or something, um, because think about it, 800 yen, let's say you buy an extra accessory, which is like, I don't know, 300 yen, 400 yen, then you have a 1 100 scale model that looks great, has a lot of accessories, and costs 1100 or 1200 yen. In the end, it's the price that makes it worth it. Do not buy anything more than uh, the original retail price, which is 800 yen, because that's the whole point. It's I can recommend it because it's cheap.
Uh, for example, I want I was thinking about buying this guy a few months ago for $30 on eBay with free shipping. That would have been ridiculous and way too much. Because the model kit itself... Mm, 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 mm. But price quality, fair enough. So, let's do some quick comparisons. Here you have him with the 144 scale Zeta. And as you can see, the yeah, size difference isn't that much different. Here he is with the 100 scale Jim Kai. And the height difference is almost the same. As you can see, the Jim Kai is a standard size mobile suit of 80 meters. This guy's like 15 and whatnot meters. So it's quite a small model for a 100 scale. Here you have him next to the Nemo. And as I said, the reason I still recommend this guy is pricing. 800 yen, 1,500 yen. For the price of one Nemo, you can almost buy two of these guys. And if I had to choose between two of these, or let's see, one of these and a G Cannon, or one Nemo and 100 yen, I would definitely go for two of these. Well, that's all for this review, and see you at the next one.